This is AIM Agenda. Thanks very much for your company this morning and joining me now from Adelaide, Liberal frontbencher Senator Simon Birmingham and in the Sky News Centre, Labor MP Michelle Rowland. Michelle Rowland, you heard a bit of the criticism there from Christopher Pine. He says this deal uh, is not worth the paper. It's written on essentially uh, that uh, women and children will now become the target of people smugglers given that they won't be sent to PNG for processing and resettlement. What do you make of that? Well, the Prime Minister made it very clear that anyone who arrives or attempts to arrive in Australia by boat without a visa will not be settled in Australia. So I think that it's very clear. I don't know where Christopher Pine is getting this information from, but it is very clear that that is the situation. When facilities are up and running on Manus Island, uh, then those, uh, those arrangements will occur. But you know the history of the Malaysia deal, Michelle Rowland, and the, uh, the High Court challenge which scuttled it. There's every prospect that there will be legal challenges to this as well and it doesn't look as robust as the Malaysia deal was. I don't know that that's the case, Kieran. I think the Prime Minister also made it very clear that they took into account the decision that was made in that High Court case regarding the Malaysia transfer agreement. And there is confidence uh, that this arrangement is sufficiently robust to withstand challenge. Now, if, if this was uh, announced a year ago, there would have been the Labor left would have been outraged. There won't be any concern today at the caucus at Balmain, though, will they? When when you meet in a bit over an hour from now. I think that the caucus has been very united on uh, one thing and that is to ensure that we don't have people dying at sea, that we end this practice. When I go out and about in my community, people are sick of the images of uh, people dying at sea, particularly children. And I also think that people understand, look, we actually don't know how many people have paid people smugglers to make this dangerous and ultimately life-ending journey. We only know about the boats that are reported. There could be thousands of people uh, who uh, have simply gone missing and we will never know who those people are. We need to take very uh, urgent and robust action uh, to ensure that this ceases, that we take away the product. And the biggest uh, single act you can do is in taking away the product is saying to the people, smugglers, you don't have something to sell anymore. You cannot guarantee people that they will get to Australia. And I might also point out that we even saw over the weekend uh, footage of people saying, I'm not going to get on a boat anymore. So mm. I think that um, already we see that people are having second thoughts about doing that. Senator Birmingham, I know that the coalition is obviously picking holes in this deal as Christopher Pine did earlier in the program. But isn't the government's resolve very clear here? Mr Rudd said it explicitly on Friday that any asylum seeker that arrives here by boat won't be resettled here. It, it can't be much clearer than that. Kieran, Kevin Rudd's latest promise on boat arrivals is a little bit like the proverbial fox promising to fix the holes in the hen house. In the end, Kevin Rudd uh, essentially created this problem. He undid the policies that were working. The government, under various Labor leaders, uh, Kevin and Julia, uh, has been through five or so different iterations of policies, all designed to try to fix a problem of their own making. Now, at the 11th hour, just before the election, they come up with a rather hasty, rather flimsy, two-page arrangement between uh, Australia and Papua New Guinea that, as the weekend has unfolded, it's become very clear this arrangement does not guarantee that everybody will be sent to PNG, certainly does not guarantee that nobody will ever be resettled in Australia. All we have on this is the Prime Minister's word. Well, we know what the word of Labor leaders is worth before an election because we saw that with Julia Gillard before the last election. We saw that with Kevin Rudd before 2007, back when he was going to turn boats around, you might but recall. But on the merits of this... So Kevin Rudd's on got the plenty of form it, on this. Do you, do you, but on the merits of it, do you see the argument that Michelle Rowland was putting there that, that the ultimate sugar on the table, so to speak, is to, well, to remove that incentive, is to remove any prospect of resettlement? Uh, the, the coalition has said that its previous policies will work. If they don't, this, isn't this a, a mechanism that you should seriously be looking at? Well, Kieran, of course we would continue talks with Papua New Guinea if elected to see how we could best do something out of this and we welcome the fact that Papua New Guinea is willing to work with Australia on this. But let's understand that women and children, as Christopher Pine said, are being returned from Manus Island to Australia. That has been happening. We have the reality here that the government is saying when facilities are up and running, 
but won't say by when that will be. Michelle Rowland just said it then before, when this program is up and running, when we have the facilities to transport people there. This arrangement that Kevin Rudd released late on a Friday afternoon, so it was subject to minimal scrutiny before hitting the news bulletins that night, has no details of when these things will happen, has no details of how they will happen, has no details of how much they will cost. I mean, this has got to be one of the flimsiest arrangements ever released by a Prime Minister. All right, let's go to Michelle Rowland on that. And, and the question, the, the, the threshold question here, is it legally binding, I suppose? Well, the arrangement uh, has been signed. And, I mean, if you're talking about is it binding in terms of whether uh, there will be a challenge by the court, whether that uh, challenge will be successful, I mean, that is something for, uh, for other proponents uh, to take up. But I would point out, Kieran, that you know, in all this debate that we're having, uh, we should point out that Australians, and, I, and I've been out, you know, uh, Simon just mentioned, you know, it was announced late on a Friday afternoon. Well, I spent the weekend out in my electorate. And I can tell you people were saying two very, uh, two things very strongly. Firstly, there is an enormous recognition that Australia does need to play its part in terms of our humanitarian intake. And I'm proud that we're implementing that aspect of the Houston report, as we said we would, both in terms of the regional uh, agreement framework, but also in terms of increasing our humanitarian intake. And if we manage um, to ensure that less people arrive by boat, that we can actually increase our humanita uh, humanitarian intake even more, something that the Liberals have opposed. So right. two things coming very strongly, that we need to uh, recognise our responsibilities, but equally, we do need to ensure that those places um, aren't entirely filled by people who arrive by irregular maritime means. Well, let's go to this uh, caucus meeting today. Meets at 10 this morning at Balmain Town Hall. Michelle Rowland, is this just a picture opportunity, a, a Labor pre-election pep talk? I don't expect that to be the case at all. Of course, we have um, the agenda is uh, the reforms to the caucus rules in terms of the later Labor uh, leadership. There will also, I'm sure, be some discussion uh, about um, more broader party reform. And they're two things that I'm very keen on and I've been very involved in and been a very strong advocate for. Uh, Simon Birmingham, it, it is good to uh, democratise political parties, isn't it? This might open the way for further, uh, further moves in that direction for the Liberal Party as well. Well, Kieran, the Liberal Party hasn't suffered in government the same types of problems Labor have of a revolving door prime ministership. In the end, uh, the demonstration today of why Labor is so unfit to continue to government is simply because they will spend today discussing how to fix the Labor Party's problems, not how to fix the many problems that Australia faces and the many policy issues that we should be addressing. All right, let's go to the uh, election date now. If Kevin Rudd, well, he's not going to call it today, it's, uh, August 24 is pretty much written off but uh, one Labor figure, the union leader Paul Howes believes Mr Rudd should do it soon. He was on the Seven Network this morning. Prime Ministers of the country have the right to call an election when they see fit, that's their right um, and I'm sure the Prime Minister will call an election when he thinks the time is right. Uh, personally I think he should call an election soon uh, because frankly um, uh, if you look at the polls and you see how Labor's travelling uh, it gives us that best opportunity to, uh, to secure a re-election of the Labor government. Paul House thinks you should make the most of the honeymoon period, Michelle Rowland. Your thoughts? Look, the Prime Minister will call an election at the time of his choosing, and that's been the case uh, since time immemorial. Um, can I say too, Karen? I mean, you know, I'm in um, the most marginal uh, Labor seat in New South Wales. I've been ready for this election um, for quite some time. I'm ready to debate issues anywhere. I welcome debating Simon this morning. I'd welcome debating my opponent uh, in my own seat uh, at a time of uh, your choosing, Kieran, if you want to do that. I think it's important in our democracy that during um, election campaigns that we have as much visibility of candidates who are putting, putting their hands up and saying, uh, these are the reasons why you should elect me. These are the values that I hold. But, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, there will be constant speculation about the date, you know, and you'll have uh, people who do and don't know. I'll say to you right now, I have no idea when the date will be called and it will be um, at a time of the Prime Minister's choosing. But um, the election is something that I'm uh, very ready for. I'm very ready to uh, keep getting out there, as I've been doing for the last three years, letting people know what I believe in, what my, my values are, what I've done for the electorate and what I want to keep doing for the electorate of Greenway. OK. Another, another uh, challenge for a debate. We'll see how, where that goes, Michelle. We'll uh, explore that, uh, that opportunity. But I want to ask you, uh, Senator Birmingham, what's the mood like within the Liberal ranks? Is everyone calm uh, despite the resurgence for Labor in the polls or are, are there a few nerves around the place? 
Uh, Kieran, I think we've seen all of this before from Kevin Rudd. We've seen the grandstanding, we've seen the posturing, we've seen the egomania that he likes to surround himself with. In the end, we know that ultimately the Australian public saw through it before and we're confident that as we embark on a five-week election campaign, whenever it should be, it should be sooner rather than later though because we will now be past the third anniversary of the last election. So this government should be going to the polls and not hiding or ducking or running away from that. that we should be going soon. Whenever it is, after a five-week campaign, where all the issues can be thrashed out and where people will see that today's Kevin is the same as the bad old Kevin who rushed into decisions like he did with the fringe benefit tax changes with no consultation, with no consideration of the impact, with no realisation that it would have a whole range of third party impacts in a negative way okay. that would cripple another part of the economy, we'll be able to mount a very strong case as to why Australians need a positive plan and change for the future. Senator Birmingham, thanks for your time and Michelle Rowland, appreciate it. Thank you. A pleasure, Kieran. A quick break on a